And then that human touch will make you not a, just a 2D person. It's a 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D. And then with that, you have a multi-dimension way to engage with your workforce. Welcome back, everybody. Well, if there's one thing we learned over the last few years, is that people are inherently social animals. In-person interaction produces synergy, energy, creativity, and more importantly, it builds the trust that only comes when we're connected to others. Best practices executives can use to make hybrid working more effective. Please welcome our next guest, the brilliant Elizabeth Zhu, Chief Technology Officer. Hi there, Elizabeth. Lovely to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. And it's a great honor to speak in front of this fantastic group of uh, world-class leaders. And I really appreciate that. I hope that you can hear me okay. I'm from, I'm currently sitting in the Silicon Valley, my home office. It's an example of a hybrid work. And here, I hope that we can see on my slide. Yeah, let's get your slides up there, Elizabeth, and we will hand over to you to walk us through it. Um, so hopefully you should see those appearing on the stage here. Um, we'll go full screen on those in just a moment. Um, before I hand over to you, Elizabeth, um, I've been asking all of our speakers this. Uh, we've seen a lot of change, a lot of disruption over the course of the past couple of years. What for you has been the, the, the big highlights there in terms of uh, positive change? I think the positive change is we spend less time on the road, we pollute less air, and we actually work more time, become a more uh, productive. Uh, of course, the negative side could be burnout, etc. Uh, but you know, a hybrid work environment can bridge the gap. So we, I can share with you a few uh, best practices. Yeah, excited to hear those best practices, Elizabeth. Um, so why don't I hand over to you at this point, folks? If you do have any questions. For Elizabeth, as we're going along, do let me know. I'm more than happy to get you up here to ask those and put those questions to her. Um, but for now, Elizabeth, I will hand over to you. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. And today I'm going to go through uh, seven best practices, seven ways to really help you to thrive in the hybrid workplace. A little bit about me. Um, I've been in the high-tech industry since 1995. And I worked in Silicon Valley, Thailand, China, and Europe. Yeah, I've been traveling a great deal uh, since 2000. And um, the largest company I've been working at is a CP group, 350,000 employees worldwide in over 160 countries. And overall, the revenue is about is more than uh, $65 billion. So it's a large conglomerate. And I, also, I was also the CTO of a BMC Software and um, currently a public company board member. Uh, so I hope that credential can support me to speak in front of you. All right. Um, so, um, oh. so one thing that I really want to share with you is the hybrid workplace. The question here is why do we want to hybrid? have the hybrid workplace. And is this the future of the trend? So at this point, according to many statistics results, two thirds of the companies are actually working and taking the hybrid uh, working model at this point. And then over half of the employees really value this hybrid working style. Of course, a lot of them decide to choose the remote only. But but this is going to be um, there forever. I'm not going to see any trend that this is going to be um, changed or reduced. And then let's go through uh, a couple of things that uh, we can uh, make the best of this hybrid network, hybrid uh, workplace. The number one is to take a 10 hour working day at the office. Why do I uh, want to propose this? Um, this goes back to my endless business trips. So to me, the hybrid working place happened since 2000. Or even before that, when I was working at IBM, I was working with nine countries and trying to produce the software and make sure that the nine uh, languages were working properly. So that's the time that um, 
I have to work with the different countries and to all those people in the countries, it was a um, hybrid working environment. So when later on, when I started to travel to those places, I found out I spend more than 10 hours each day with my, um, with my teams. And then now when, when we started to formalize this hybrid working environment, I strongly suggest any leaders or any employee, when you do go back to the office, try to spend 10 hours there. Why is that so important? Because this is the time for you to really highlight and to really enhance your human touch and the human relationship. Having a 10 working day, the benefit is you can avoid a lot of traffic. And also you can interact with the people who are early bird and who are the uh, night owls. And, and you can utilize your time to spend a lot more time and in, really work with those people, not just working on, in front of your desk, right? That's, that's not the way to do. So go, to a, go schedule a 10 hour working day at the office with as many people as you can and spend as much time as you can at the office. So that's the tip number one. Let's go to the tip number two. I hope my clicker works. Okay. All right. Let me try it again. Oh, it works. Okay. Okay. The number two is to reschedule the online only meetings. And I did that all the time. Whenever I went to a remote location, or went to some locations to visit my teams, I always reschedule those online only meetings to later days because you have to utilize your time, spend as much time as you can with the local people, with the people you didn't have a chance to interact with. So I would suggest you to do that. This is so easy. Schedule to the time that either you are visiting them, visiting that office or some other time that you're not in the remote location, you're not in the office. So then the tip number three is to really have meetings with the key stakeholders. We all know that uh, who are our key stakeholders, right? It could be a project manager, could be a developer, could be a uh, architect, uh, could be the brand manager, could be the marketing person, could be the sales. Right. And to really, before you go back to the office, think about it. Who are the key stakeholders? Maybe you had a big difference. Maybe you had some misunderstanding and try to bring them together. Um, spend as much time as you can to iron out all the differences. So I would suggest you that when you reschedule your online meetings, think about it. How can you utilize that time to really make sure that your key stakeholders are there and you can have a face-to-face -face conversation with them and not only just one maybe a group of them and try to coordinate with them and make sure they are in the office as well i think this has been a great best practice for people to really work out the differences okay the next one the next one is to have a fun, authentic connecting time, one-on-one -on -one time, right? Because um, when we are, um, let's see, we are behind the, the, the screen or we are on Zoom, we are on Team, we are on Google Connect, we are 2D person. Meaning is we are a picture that just move a little bit, right? Because when you go to the office, things changed. I will see you become a, at least a 3D person that a, you, have your, um, you have a real person there in front of them, but you can make it a 5D and a 4D. What do you mean? The 4D could be with aroma, with this beautiful and then aroma from the coffee. Could be a delicious dinner, a lunch that you work with people. And you could make the 5D, could be a laughter, could be a lot of things that can last longer. 
And I think having a fun, authentic connecting time, turn yourself from a 2D image to a 3D person or 4D fun person with a great aroma. And maybe a 5D person with a lot of great memories. So now let's talk about the, uh, the tip number five. To really organize team activities, to have some fun activities. We say, oh my God, I, going back to office is such a headache. I have to do so many things. Not necessarily. I usually uh, name someone from my, from my team, either we call them a CEO, Chief Entertainment Officer, or CMO. Chief Motivation Officer, instead of like, oh, you just organize an event. And we did a many, you know, very, very interesting events, such as Agris. We'll give the team members some uh, packing material and rubber band, and, you know, shipping material, and then we give them raw eggs. Let's race, see how far can you um, um, launch that egg, you know, you can make all sorts of uh, devices. How far can you launch that egg without breaking it? Oh, look, this is a great um, event for us to boost the creativity. And a team, they used to have uh, different opinions. They work really well together. They start to think about how can we utilize all sorts of material? Can we do research? Can we work together? How can we act as a team to boost the creativity. We also did something pretty simple. Shaving cream, straws. Let's see who can have the highest and tallest, um, um, tallest of uh, uh, shaving cream towers. We did mini golf, we did all sorts of things. And those uh, team activities are really, really, um, uh, I would say that motivating and um, uh, creative. Well, easy things could be go bowling, walking around, go hiking, having a delicious meal, but anything that you can engage people, make people think they're involved, engaged, and having fun, I strongly suggest you to do that. And also give one of your team members a, a role like a CEO and the CMO, definitely make them feel more empowered and engaged. So now let's talk about the number six is to tell your stories. Well, we spend a lot of time uh, behind the screen, right? And then suddenly the office is opening up. We have opportunity to work with people, start to meet with people, prepare a few stories. Uh, something could be fun, something could be interesting. And um, I have to tell you one of the story I heard from my team member is um, because they could not uh, get together and they, they had this neighborhood um, cocktail party. So each person will make their own cocktail and bring to their front lawn and cheer with, the, uh, with their neighbors who are six feet, 10 feet apart or uh, some other people, they start to sing. And uh, I deliver fruit, because I had a little orchard in the Sil Silicon Valley. I deliver fruit to my neighbors. So talk about those stories and talk about the stories that you did for other people, such as like, I tried to raise uh, computers for, for kids. We raised 60 computers for the people that who lives in the outside of the Silicon Valley to make sure that 60 kids had a computer uh, to attend the classes, right? You can tell the stories to demonstrate that, that you are a caring person or something fun or something interesting. This also adds another dimension of you. Could be a good heart, could be a fun person. So I strongly suggest you to think about it. What are the stories? What are the things could be interesting enough for you to bring some beautiful memory and make you a, a person with a one more dimension. Okay. The last but not least is to bring everyone on the same page because we're talking about a hybrid. I've been talking about all the best practice when we are in the office, 
Now, when we are not in the office, and this, when we are still working with our team member remotely, what shall we do? I think the most important thing as any leader would be bring everyone on the same page. And if you look at this screen, you say, oh, this is a dashboard. But you can build your other dashboard. Could be the goals of the, uh, the team, the project status, the team activities, and all the success stories, right? To use this as an asynchronized way to bring people on the same, same page. And this will help a lot of people who are introverted, who are introverted. They don't want to go up and down, share their stories and uh, uh, openly say a lot of things, reach out to people. But you give them a spot on your dashboard and to have their spot there and allow them and encourage them to update. And then by doing that, they feel like they are part of the team. They're treated fairly. Uh, yeah, you can do a lot of different things to really make sure that, that everyone feel engaged, such as chat. I used to work in the place that um, I had my uh, developers. They, they sat side by side. Both of them had earphones on. They don't talk to each other. They chat with each other. Isn't that interesting? And um, so as a team, it's always great to have a project-based chat channels for those people that who really want to make sure that they're on the same page and also they are connecting with each other. But for the overall organization, a chat message is enough. Isn't, is not enough. Why is that? Because you as a leader really want to make sure that everyone has the visibility of the overall picture, overall priority. Because you think about it, what are the main uh, responsibility of a leader? Any manager has at least five responsibility. Number one, to give our team the goal. Number two, to prioritize all the goals on an ongoing basis, right? And number three is to give resources, right? Whatever resources that, that we have, our employee don't have, or you move the resource around, right? And this dashboard definitely give you a big, uh, quick view of uh, what are your goals, what are your status, what are your priorities, and where you spend your resources. And one more thing is to give feedback, right? Uh, yeah, we shared a few, re few best practices about how to give people feedback by connecting those on a one-on-one -on -one base at the team place. Once you earn that trust, you can give feedback in a more gentle way or more, um, the employees will accept you more. So um, number four of a manager's responsibility is, is giving feedback. Number five is really the core of leadership. How can you motivate people? How can you make sure that your team are collaborating well and you generate the synergy? So the, the number five of our leader's responsibility is to make sure people are engaged and uh, people, uh, we have the we must um, motivate our team. So with those seven tips, I hope that I shared my thoughts and I hope that this will be you know, helpful for you. Maybe one of the tips could be helpful. So yeah, you're welcome to connect me on LinkedIn. Uh, search me, Dr. Elizabeth Xu, um, and then I'll be more than happy to do that. I write um, monthly or sometimes more frequent newsletters. You can read my newsletters about the hybrid working style as well. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, yeah great, great stuff. stuff. Many thanks, thanks Elizabeth, Elizabeth, for sharing those tips and tricks. Um, folks, if you do have any questions for Elizabeth, then do let us know. We'll get you up here. Perhaps you want to share your own experiences of hybrid working and what's working well for you. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, alternatively, any questions for Elizabeth, 
that we would welcome as well. Uh, Elizabeth, a couple of questions from me, maybe just to get the ball rolling. Um, and I want to start, if I can, with this idea of, of the hybrid working experience when it relates to people uh, who are in the office, working with people who are outside of the office, um, and actually how you bring those different constituencies together in an equitable way. It's come up already today, this idea of equity and how you give people the same opportunities uh, and uh, you know, perhaps ensure that people who are working remotely aren't ignored in terms of career progression or opportunities or um, recognition. How are you seeing firms uh, you know, tackle this challenge? Oh, this is a fantastic question. So the number one thing is if you can set up uh, working hour. I, I usually have a Zoom calls ongoing like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So people from a different uh, geographic location, they'll come, we'll discuss what, what's going on and if, if needed, right? Another thing is I, as a leader, I'll write a weekly uh, email and to really highlight who are the people that are, who did a great job that we really need to make sure that uh, they get the recognition. I also have a one-on-ones with my direct reports on a regular basis. We list all the uh, necessary um, tasks. We build like a three years career plan as well as what are the things I need to do as a leader? What are the things that they need to do? as an employee, we call the two-way career paths. And having that, they feel like we really care about their uh, career. They clearly understand what kind of things they need to do uh, to become uh, uh, the next level, to, to enter the next level, get a promotion. And, and they also understand that, that anytime we try to bring them to the next level, it requires a lot of work from managers as well. And they will appreciate our intention, our effort in bringing them to the next level, setting the stage to give them the opportunity to, to show their talent, to give them the opportunity to learn new skills and do different things, right? And I think of having the regular one-on-one and with a written career development program clearly stay what's the manager's duty, what's the employee's duty, we'll engage them more. Yeah, great. Thanks, Elizabeth. I'm, I just want to ask you a little bit about some of the, the research that you've been doing, the work that you've been doing, the conversations that you've been having. What are you seeing emerge as, as trends regarding attitudes towards hybrid work and remote work and in-office work and, and preferences? Uh, are you seeing a strong preference one way or the other? Uh, does it is it linked to demographics? Is it linked to geographies? Um, how are you seeing some of the trends play out in that space? Well, this is a big, uh, big topic. I can just pick uh, a few things. I think uh, a lot of times the people prefer to go to office once a week or once another week. And they really want to have this team uh, interaction. At that time, we prefer to schedule everyone getting to the office at once so we can maximize that human touch. And also I would suggest all of them, since they are working at home, so do I, I work at home most of the time, so we need to have boundaries. The boundary of a time boundaries, for example, hey, this is a breakfast time, dinner time, or a lunch time, this is exercise. Oh, one more thing, we do exercise together. We have a Zoom, we have an exercise at 5 p.m. as well, 8 p.m. You know, just people just follow, um, get online, and then sometimes 20 people exercise with me. And then you have this boundary to make sure that the people who are working at home will have a property time, proper time to pick up their kids, to go uh, to prepare dinner, to, uh, to have a dinner with their family, and not to send them a message in the middle of the night to, to disturb their sleep. So I, I, we have those kind of rules um, defined. Everyone publish their own preference and we respect each other. I think that really works well. Yeah, and you see, we started to see the emergence of tools that, that maybe limit some of that out of hours uh, communication. And you know, it's been linked to, to burnout, as you said right at the top of the 
call here, you know, people feeling overworked and the need to be always on. Is there a role for technology there in perhaps uh, putting some governance around when it is appropriate and okay to contact people out of office? Well, there are so many things you can use, whether you're on Google technology, Microsoft and, and technology. Many uh, technology uh, will allow you to set work hour, non-working hour, right? But I think uh, uh, as a leader, if you promote exercising, if you as a, be a good example to tell people that this is my dinner time, unless you have this absolutely urgent issue, you text me, you call me, and then do not expect me to accept the meeting in those times. I think being a leader, be brave enough to just show the team that how you would handle this is extremely important. At the end of the day, employees do take you as an example. Yeah, setting the tone at the top is, uh, has never been more important. Um, so I think we do have a, uh, a comment perhaps from the audience here. We've got Brian up next. Hi there, Brian. Hi, how you doing this afternoon? Yeah, very well, thanks. Yourself? Doing well. Uh, Elizabeth, really liked uh, your lay down. And one of the things we found in our hybrid experience now where we have remote and in-person meetings all collaborating together is to arm up the folks in the room with their own laptops or devices. So they join the same video experience, whether you're in the room or remote. Uh, of course, you have to be careful about managing the audio properly but then everybody is interacting in the same way and you don't have a feeling of us in the room versus them remote. It really brought everybody together. Everybody felt like they're on the same platform. So I just wanted to share. Yeah, definitely. We did that too, because uh, a lot of times when you allow people to share information, it's best for all of them to log in and then mute and uh, mute themselves. And, but have as a visual, um, just for example, like uh, we last night we did um, the same uh, immersive experience. Everyone came out of the uh, breakout room and and get out of there. They they were just saying each other like that. They feel great. And you, the comment that you made, it just make people feel they are equal, whether they are in the office or not. That's really great. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks for sharing, Brian. Much appreciated. Lovely to see you. Loving the sunset in the background as well. Where we all get reset. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, Elizabeth, one final question for me. If you were to make a prediction about how this kind of hybrid work might pan out over the next couple of years, what, what sort of direction do you think it's heading in? You, uh, you were, if you were a betting person, where would you stake your money? Well, I think the hybrid is going to continue. And then the um, productivity software and also this immersive uh, experience is going to make our hybrid work uh, I'll see uh, more interesting and people will think more engaged and then this is going to be the most economic way for us to boost the productivity but having in-person interaction will boost the creativity and also the most important thing is the trust that it, I would suggest all the leaders Whenever you have a new employee, try to meet that employee in person or try to organize some in-person meetings. And then that human touch will make you not a, just a 2D person. It's a 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D. And then with that, you have a multi-dimension way to engage with your workforce. And to be a 4D, 5D, 6D leader, you'll be more effective. And then that's my final words. Yeah, love it, Elizabeth. Love the passion, love the energy, um, love the idea of 60 people. Um, many thanks for sharing your thoughts here today. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you. And uh, connect me on LinkedIn. We will stay in touch. Thank you. Many thanks, Elizabeth. Wonderful stuff. Thank you to Elizabeth. Thank you to all of our speakers. And thank you for all of your questions and contributions here today. That is it for our content sessions this morning. But there is still much to look forward to this afternoon as we commence our one-to-one -one meeting programme. We have taken all of the information you gave us pre-summit about your challenges, about your projects, what you're working on, your priorities. And we've made some hopefully hugely valuable solution provider recommendations a great chance to discuss some of your key challenges with people that we think might be able to help. Have a great afternoon. Please do let us know how all those conversations go. 
and we will see you back here at the same time tomorrow morning, starting with a session looking at innovation and growth. That's with Ray Bajaj from Cardinal Health and kicks off from 9 a.m. Eastern. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Thank you.